In this episode of The Christian Philosopher, we're going to talk about 10 reasons why everyone should want Christianity to be true. Welcome back, everyone. This is Scott Sullivan from the Aquinas School of Theology and Philosophy. Today, we're talking about 10 reasons why everyone should at least want Christianity to be true. In the last video, I talked about what I call the MAC, the Master Argument for Christianity. And just as a quick review, it goes something like this. If Christianity is true, then a lot of good things we want are also true. Christianity is true, therefore a lot of good things we want are also true. That's the master argument for Christianity. And the purpose of this video is to defend that first premise of the argument. Now, I take it here for granted that all of these things are desirable to human beings. I'm just basing this on human nature. And it calls for intellectual honesty. So if someone says, oh, I don't want this or I don't desire that, I just take it as that person is not being intellectually honest. It'd be like a guy who says he doesn't like to eat delicious foods or maybe a guy who doesn't like sexual pleasure. These things are absurd. They are These sorts of desires, I think, are grounded in our human nature. So in order for any kind of discussion to be productive, both sides have to be honest. I just want to point out here that not all of these reasons are independent of one another. What I mean here is that some of these uh, in this list are corollaries of other reasons, and I think that's okay. Uh, making what is implicit explicit in this way, I think, can still serve as a motivating force for the mind. All right, so let's get into those reasons now. These are 10 reasons why everyone should at least want Christianity to be true. And the first one is that if Christianity is true, then you and your loved ones never die. I think one of the most painful things we have to go through in this life is the grieving process. When we, when we lose someone we love uh, through death, this is a, a painful process, and it's going to be painful no matter who you are. Uh, but the Bible says this, brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. All right, so the point here in St. Paul is that, yes, everybody has to suffer when they, when they lose a, a loved one, uh, but we don't have to suffer like people without hope. Christianity, if true, brings us hope for eternal life. That means I don't have to die. You don't have to die. Our loved ones don't have to die. Christ rescued us from this death, and we can live forever with him uh, in eternal life. So with Christianity, we have this idea that we, we don't have to die. Neither do our loved ones. And I think this is something that we all want. Number two, if Christianity is true, perfect happiness is possible and within your control. So the classical definition of happiness is a satisfaction of desires. And you can have partial satisfactions of things. So when you, when you want something and, and you attain it, that, gives you some desi that satisfies some desire. It gives you some happiness. But then again, this is what St. Thomas Aquinas called imperfect happiness, meaning that you kind of get it and it kind of goes away, or maybe you get it, you hang on to it, but you're kind of afraid you might lose it. All these are forms of imperfect happiness. But when you think about it, perfect happiness is what we really all want. We want a, a complete and permanent satisfaction of all desires, but that can't really happen with the things in this world. But if Christianity is true, then perfect happiness is possible and within your control. When a person dies and goes to heaven, when they come into the beatific vision, they see God face to face. They possess God who is the infinite good, the ultimate good who satisfies all of our desires. So we have perfect satisfaction of all desires and that satisfaction cannot be lost. And not only that, unlike all these lesser kinds of happiness in this world, attaining this perfect happiness is 100% within your control. The Bible says in 1 Timothy that, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So everyone can have this perfect happiness if they just will it. So if Christianity is true, perfect happiness is possible and within your control, and this is something we all want. Number three, if Christianity is true, all pain and negative emotions will be eliminated forever. 
Now, this, of course, is a corollary from what I said earlier, from uh, once we get to heaven, uh, there will be perfect happiness. It's a corollary, but it's important to make it explicit because we can kind of enjoy that now. We can know that no pain in this life is permanent. Let me say that again. All pain in life is temporary, and we can know that now and benefit from that now. So when you're going through some hard times, uh, you can know for sure that all pain is temporary and it will go away. You will experience happiness and you, the, the end of your life will be like the end of a fairy tale where they lived happily ever after. As Christ says in the third beatitude, blessed are they who mourn for they shall be comforted. Also in the book of Revelation, it says God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. So for those who love God, we are talking about the wiping out of all negative emotions forever. No more pain, suffering, sadness, worry, anxiety. All those things are gonna be wiped out forever. And I think this is something we all want. Number four, if Christianity is true, then knowing perfect truth is possible. You know, the Greek philosopher Aristotle said that all men by nature desire to know. That's an important observation to know about ourselves is that we have this intellectual side and we seek intellectual fulfillment. We want to just know things. We want to know as many things as we possibly can. But of course, it's not that easy. There's a big gap from our desire for knowledge and its fulfillment. You got to take time. You need leisure. You know, studying is hard and it's just laborious. And so it takes a lot of work to learn things. But again, if Christianity is true, then God is the source of all truth. In the beatific vision, we can come to know God, the God of all truth. So as Thomas Aquinas says, for perfect happiness, the intellect needs to reach the very essence of the first cause, and thus it will have its perfection through union with God as with that object in which alone man's happiness consists. So if Christianity is true, we can come to know all things through the beatific vision. We can have our intellectual desires satisfied as well. And this, I think, is something we all want. Number five, if Christianity is true, then morality is real. What I mean here, of course, is that if Christianity is true, then there is an objective moral law that comes from God. We are obligated to do good and avoid evil. This moral law is objective. That means it comes from God. It's over and above human opinion. So it's not subject to every Tom, Dick, and Harry wanting to kind of make, make something else up. The moral law is objective. It's independent of any human opinion. And there are, therefore, real rights and duties, not just rights that we make up, but real rights, natural rights that in fact come from God. Also, that means there is perfect justice, perfect justice. So every good deed gets rewarded. Every bad deed gets punished. There is perfect justice in that sense. And so nobody gets away with anything. So that's really important too, I think, for a certain, our, our moral satisfaction to see that while in this life, of course, it often seems like bad people get away with things. They never get caught or, or maybe they die and never get adequately punished for the things that they've done in this life. But if Christianity is true, there is, in fact, perfect justice. Now, unjust people, they may not like this, but they certainly want it for others. So I think this idea of perfect justice is something that we all want. So in other words, as we say in philosophy, if Christianity is true, then moral realism is true. This rescues us from this moral nihilism, the idea that you know morality is just nothing. There's just nothing to it. It's just emotion. Um, that's not the case uh, if Christianity is true. So if Christianity is true, then morality is real. And this is something we all want. Number six, if Christianity is true, then human dignity is real. Now, we all have this idea that human beings have some kind of special value. Human beings are, are more important somehow than just, say, mosquitoes. This is an important concept when it comes to ethics and the foundation of human rights. But suppose you ask, where does this human dignity come from? What makes human beings special than, say, other creatures? Um, on atheism, there is nothing really special about human beings. We are all just accidental byproducts of a chancy universe. But on Christianity, human beings are created in the image of God, imago dei. That means human beings have intellect and will, and in that sense, they are like God. That would be kind of a natural ground for human dignity. But also in the supernatural level, human beings have been given grace by God, so we've been kind of sanctified in that sense as well. So if Christianity is true, we can have a natural and even a supernatural basis 
for human dignity, and I think this is something we all want. Number seven, if Christianity is true, then God loves you. Unlike the gods in most other religions, the God of Christianity is not indifferent to human existence. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and he used the word Abba, which is the term of a, of a close, personal endearment. And he also taught us that our God is a God of love, who loves human beings. This is a pretty, a pretty incredible thought when you think about it. So you shouldn't let the familiarity of that idea, like, oh, I hear it all the time, get in the way of how amazing that is. The God of the entire universe, the creator of everything that exists, actually loves and cares for you. This is where the idea of divine filiation comes in. You and I can be children of God. God loves us like he loves his own children. This is a pretty incredible concept. It can be very comforting in times of trial. I am a child of God and God loves me. And this is actually even true when we sin. So in the parable of the prodigal son, uh, the father who represents God, when the son has gone away and sinned, the father waits in hopeful expectation of the son's return. And when he does return, he, he throws a big part. He, he rejoices in his son's return. So God's love for us does not stop. Even when we sin, he still desires us to come back to him in repentance. So if Christianity is true, then God truly loves you. And this can give you a strong, powerful sense of peace of mind. And I think this is something we all want. Number eight, if Christianity is true, then your life has a purpose, value, and meaning. Studies on happiness show that one of the important things that people want is a sense of purpose or meaning in their life. Now, of course, we can all just make up a meaning, right? You can just have some kind of subjective meaning. Uh, the purpose of my life is to sit on the couch, eat chips, and watch Netflix. You know, we all know we can sort of make up this purpose, but this is not what people really want. I think the deeper thing that people want is real objective purpose in their life, not one they just make up. So in this case, we have an answer to the question, what is the purpose of my life? What is the meaning? There is an objective answer to that question. And if Christianity is true, then we have that. If Christianity is true, then our life has objective purpose and meaning. And I think this is something we all want. Number nine, if Christianity is true, then the entire created universe is governed by God's providential plan. It's a very comforting idea to think that the entire universe, everything that happens, is governed by an all-powerful, all-good, all-loving being. This is, can be a, a source of great comfort in times of trial because we can look at these times of trial and whatever happens through the eyes of faith. The faith is the ground here. So whatever is going on down here at, say, a secondary level, this thing happens and I lose my job and I got sick and then I had a car wreck, all these different things that upset us, at the secondary level, we can see through them with the eyes of faith and see that on top of or sort of governing all these things is the God, the God of Christianity, the God who loves us, and the God who orders all things towards the good. So here what we're talking about is God's providence as a source of comfort during times of trial, and I think this is something that we all want. Number 10, if Christianity is true, you have permanent reasons to be happy and optimistic in this world, no matter what happens. Studies show that having a positive outlook on life is important, but this requires certain goods, right? I have to have a job. I have to have a roof over my head. Um, I have to have food on the table. I have to have these goods to be happy and feel optimistic in life. But the problem is, is I don't have control over these goods. The, the goods of the world are not like that. I have no control over this. So take, for example, your health. Maybe you really value your health and you really work at it. You become a vegan or whatever you do and you work out and you don't smoke. Um, that's great. But then a thug sticks a knife in your belly. Now you've got health problems. So the point is that these goods of, the, of this world are not within our control. So it's very hard to be optimistic in these cases. The point, of course, is that the impermanence of things kind of messes up our optimism. But if Christianity is true, then we have permanent reasons to be happy and optimistic in this world. Yes, I could. a lot of things could happen to me. I could lose my job. I could lose my health. But still, I can know those permanent reasons. God loves me. God's providence is at play here, right? Salvation is still possible. Perfect happiness is still attainable. I can know all these things, and therefore, I can have these permanent reasons to be happy, and I think this is something that we all want.
All right, to summarize here, the purpose of this video is to defend that first premise in the MAC, the master argument for Christianity, that if Christianity is true, then a lot of good things we also want are true. And I gave 10 reasons for this, 10 reasons that we should at least want Christianity to be true. If Christianity is true, then you and your loved ones never really die. Perfect happiness is possible and within your control. All pain and negative emotions will be eliminated forever. Knowing perfect truth is possible. Morality is real. Human dignity is real. God loves you. Your life has a purpose, value, and meaning. The entire created universe is governed by God's providential plan. And you have permanent reasons to be happy and optimistic in this world no matter what happens. Now, of course, none of these show that Christianity is in fact true, but they're not trying to do that. The point is to show that Christianity is good, that if it were true, it would satisfy a lot of our natural desires. Now, of course, you might have sinful desires and you say, well, I couldn't do that. Well, that's true. And there's a whole reason for that as well. But most of the time is because sin destroys the happiness of others. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, apart from those sinful desires, uh, if Christianity is true, then a lot of the natural desires that we have can, in fact, be satisfied, and therefore Christianity is good. Hey guys, just real quickly here, if you like these videos and you want to learn more about uh, some of the stuff that I teach, you can visit my website, scottmsullivan.com. I have what I call the Aquinas uh, School of Theology and Philosophy. We have courses in logic, philosophy, theology, a whole bunch of stuff. You can check it out. We have a free trial. It's available on my website. Again, check it out, scottmsullivan.com.